Hello again, boys and girls. Back again with another test, not a repair, on the 78 Toyota pickup truck, 20R engine. If you've been watching, you know I've been through the mill on this. I just recently uh, got a fuel problem fixed. The throttle positioner on the carburetor wasn't working correctly. And there's that piece right there. Check the previous video on that to show, I'll tell you how to adjust that. But we got all that fixed and it was idling good and I had all the, everything, all the carburetor adjustments set, the mixture, the idle was nice. But I'm still having the hard, hot, hot, hard start problem. Man, shouldn't make videos in the morning, can't speak yet, even after coffee. What are you going to do? <laughs> so anyway, it runs fine when you first start up, high idle's good. Get up the temperature, kick it down. Low idle is perfect, 800. But as you continue to drive it, the idle quality just gets worse and worse and worse. And if you stop it, turn the engine off, it still won't start for me anywhere from 5 minutes to 20 minutes after. It used to be almost up to an hour, so that's an improvement. But just I can't have that. you got to be able to start it hot. <laughs> Can't go to the yard sales. Can't do the jumping around, you know. So, I went to the scrap yard yesterday. After about an hour and 15 minute run, picking up about 300 pounds of junk steel. Off the curb. Went down. Figured I had it fixed because I adjusted that throttle positioner and it improved. And my test, it was starting hot fine. Yeah, yesterday's a little warmer than normal. Go to the scrap yard, back it in, shut it off. Take 10 minutes to unload the bed. Go in, crankity, 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 crankity. No start, not even trying to catch, not even trying to pop, nothing. Also in the past two days since I fixed that fuel problem, I've been noticing that the exhaust pipe was popping, but backfiring a little bit on decel in gear. In gear, take your foot off the gas and just let it wind down. It's, it's, uh, pop, 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 pop. it's light, but it's there and it shouldn't be there. So I got home and on a hunch, I decided I was going to test the coil. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to test this coil. This is admittedly a cheap coil. It's a Spectra Premium. I think the number is C628. If it's not correct, I'll put a note up here telling you what it is. It was like a sub $8 coil from Rock Auto. I bought it along with everything else. Just trying to get it running. I don't know why I cheaped out on it. But it's been in here just about two years and it's already got rust on the can. It's got brass posts, so I thought that was a sign of good quality, but box and can is marked made in China. Oh boy. <laughs> it's like these Master Pro, whatever you get at the parts store today, it's all made in China. They don't even stock the good stuff anymore. You gotta order it, special order it. And mini rant, <laughs> O'Reilly's got a better quality one, standard motor parts. And they don't stock it as special order only. They want you to come in and pay for it, pay for shipping just so they can ship it to the store so you can go pick it up with your non-running vehicle. How does this make sense? Oh well, end of rant. So I'm gonna show you how to test this thing. We got the GM HEI ignition module conversion on this. A lot simpler, a lot cheaper than the Toyota Igniter. So, best thing to do, undo the nuts and the washers. They're 5 16 nuts. Take the wires off the terminals to test. Don't test it with the wires on, you might get a false reading. Yeah, I know, it's a pain in the butt. Yeah, it only took me 30 seconds, what the heck. No big deal. If you got your 5 16 socket your quarter inch drive tool it's a snap so no excuses do it right so there's the coil that's the negative that's the positive that of course goes to the distributor we'll go ahead and pull this off and I'm going to show you the full test you need to check what is called primary resistance and secondary resistance in a coil there's actually two separate coils so to speak 
there's a primary coil and a secondary coil. I'm not going to go over how coils work. You can, I can do that another time or you can look that up. It's, it's fairly simple. But this is a way to check the resistance on it to see if it's within spec. Now, for the 7820R, it's supposed to be primary resistance 1.3 to 1.7 ohms. Secondary resistance is supposed to be between 6,000 ohms and 14,500 ohms. Supposedly anything in between is, means a good coil. So, let's find out. Let's see if I can find a place to put you all here. So you can see what I'm doing. Now, let's bring it here for a second. I gotta, I gotta this. Get your typical TP voltmeter. Start off, put it on the 200 ohms range. Turn it on. Should read 1 or OL depending on your meter. That's the way it's supposed to be. Take your leads and clip them together or hold them together if you've got the probes. And find out what the resistance in these wires are because we're dealing with such small readings here you need to find out what the base resistance of these wires is going to be. This will become clear in a minute. Let it settle in. Give it about 10-15 seconds. Okay, so the clips and the wires and all that about 1.4, 1.5 ohms. I'll go with 1.4 just to be charitable. Okay, so unclip those. Put the black on the negative. It's marked negative on the coil. And put the red on the positive. And I'll bring this up here and show you the meter so you can see what's going on. Okay, just like before, put it on, let it settle. In about 10 seconds or so. Doesn't seem to be moving anymore, so that's okay. 4.7. So, 4.7 steady, minus the 1.4. That's 4.3, 3.3 ohms. That's almost double the top end of the specification. Very high resistance on the primary side. Why is that important? I'll explain after I show you the second test. Let me check the secondary now. Leave the negative on there. And put the positive into where the coil wire goes. All right. Oh, sorry, I forgot something. You need to change this range from 200 to past 2,000 to 20,000. Because it's going to be a much higher reading. Okay. And that base resistance isn't going to matter so much on this. So because it's on a 20,000 range, that dot is actually a comma. So it's 9,730 ohms. Now that's within spec. It's supposed to be 6,500 to 14,500. So the secondary is actually good. Put this back and try it again just for the fun of it. There. Ooh, no. okay, get in the right range. There we go. So again, still reading 1.4. Hook up the negative. Hook up the positive. Let it settle. Four point six minus one point four equals three point two. Primary side is bad. Now, why is this a problem? The problem is 
that plus and minus is where your battery voltage goes in. Okay. And if you have high resistance on that, it in effect cuts the voltage that the coil sees and can use. So basically a battery voltage 12.6. Uh, charging voltage about 13.8 or something a little bit less. So when you start increasing resistance on an input circuit like that, it starts resisting the flow of the electrons, the DC current. And what's actually going through those coils into the secondary coil to give you your big energy spark is reduced. You can do the math. There's Ohm's law. You can look that up if you want to, if you really want to know. But doing the math on this with the current Ohm reading on this coil Instead of getting the usual somewhere between 8 and 10 volts, it's only getting like 4, like half. In some cases, when it's hot, when it gets hot, the resistance actually goes even higher. And heat's one of the biggest killer of coils, especially for low-quality ones like this piece of junk, which I never should have bought. And I measured this dead hot yesterday right after I shut it off, and the resistance was even higher. It, was, it wasn't... 3.2 it was actually 3.8 so that was like something like a 65 percent drop in the voltage it was getting less than four volts how it was even running i don't know but concerning the 12.6 volts it's, it's getting like 3.62 volts trying to start well no wonder it won't start the spark's too weak if there's any spark at all crazy <laughs> so uh we got, a, we got a part on order coming from Rock Auto. Be here in two or three days. It would actually take the same or longer doing the special order through the local parts houses because they don't even stock the good ones. And I'd have to find a way to go pick it up. This way, it comes direct to my house. Thank you, Mr. Mailman. And that's going to be SMP brand, Standard Motor Products, which is well known and has been around for a while. And yeah, they have different levels of quality on, on their coils and parts and whatever. I want for the mid-range part, there's something better than the, than the quote-unquote economy coil. And even so, it was less than $11. And the same coil is being sold on eBay and elsewhere for $24 to $30 a piece. Napa is selling the same coil under their own name, the exact same coil, for $40. So I can't argue about this. And, I, and that coil's got, the, got the, the baseline specs I need on it. It's 1.3 to 1.7 ohms and like 8,000 to 14,500 on the secondary. So, can't argue. It's kind of important to match the coil resistance when you do the GM conversion. Because this little bugger can be a little sensitive to voltage changes like that, resistance changes. This is also a standard motor products unit, and I'm really happy with it. LX301T, this is a T-series. They make a slightly better one without the T, LX301. Cost about $8, $10 more. Hey, whichever you want to spend, whatever level of quality you want to get, that's up to you. But don't buy the cheapy, cheapy, cheapy stuff, because then you have nothing but headache like this. <laughs> so there you go. That's how you test the ignition coil. And hopefully we're going to get this up and running, and I will report back and post an update on it. And see if we finally, 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 finally cure the hot, hard hot start issue. And the crap idle issue when hot. Of course, putting a new coil in, I'm going to go back and retune that carburetor all over again. But hey, since I've already done it about 9,000 times, it only takes me about 5 or 10 minutes. Since I know what I'm doing now funny how that works isn't it so there you go hope that helps uh, end of this video I will post a chart of all the base specifications for ignition coils for Toyota pickup different engines 18R 18RC the 20R the 22R the 22RE I'll have them all even 3VZ 
I'll have them all up there for you as a reference. You can pause the video and check the numbers if you want. So you know what you're looking at. And so you have the baseline numbers in order to test your own coil if you want to. All right. So there you go. Thanks for watching. We'll talk to you next time. I'll keep you updated. Later.